That is the Great Ocean Road, and that little ribbon of bitumen that follows Victoria's south coast would be a stunning drive on a unicycle with a square wheel. That's the easy bit. The tougher question, assuming your unicycle's in for a service, is what's your weapon of choice? Lamborghini, Aston Martin, or Ferrari? Well, I'm about to find out. Ooh, tough gig. The only catch is, I have to pick one car from these three. The one I'd be driving home if the bloke from Tats knocked on the door and said, guess what? But where do you start on a job like this? I figured the Aston Martin looked the least intimidating and probably the easiest to drive. So let's kick off with that. Oh, and spare me the 007 jokes, okay? Aston Martins have always been about gentlemen's carriages, you know, English drawing rooms, cucumber sandwiches and corgi droppings, probably. But where does that leave this one with its V8 engine and all that sexy bodywork? Where indeed. In fact, you can forget all about the sandwiches and tea with the vicar thing, because these days, the Aston is packing a 4.2 litre V8 with 283 kilowatts and a six-speed manual gearbox. All yours for 236 grand. One really old-fashioned element of this car is the packaging. It does the reverse cars. You see, despite being quite a big car on the outside, it's actually quite cramped on the inside. How they've done that is beyond me. But, and you're going to love this, the Aston does have one staggeringly good party trick left up its sleeve. See, there's a flappy valve inside the exhaust system, and at 4,000 RPM, this happens. Yeah, baby! What a noise! This is the best sounding brand new car you can buy, bar none. In fact, you'd buy it just for that racket alone. They should record it on a DVD. I'd buy a copy. So can the other cars, with their exotic mid-engine layouts, match the Aston for sheer audio pleasure? If the Aston is all about manners and a ripping soundtrack, the Lamborghini Gallardo is all about scaring small kids and old people. The first thing you need to know about this car is that Lamborghini is now owned by Audi, which is why they don't fall to bits anymore. The engine is a V10, and the Lambo sticks to the road like a seagull to a sandwich crust, thanks to all-wheel drive. And it needs it with 368 kilowatts on tap and a price tag of a neat 400K. You really can see where the time and effort and money has gone into this car. The interior in particular is just beautiful. The materials are sensational, especially the leather, which is really, really classy and something that we haven't seen in Lamborghinis ever before. Despite being four-wheel drive, this car's got an exceptional amount of steering feel. Normally when you drive all four wheels, you trade off a little bit of feedback through the tiller. This car doesn't suffer from that. And the other thing I'd say about the Gallardo is that it always feels a big car. I think even if you were driving it across the middle of Lake Eyre, you'd still be concentrating hard to make sure you didn't drive off the edge. It's wide. Oh, and I also forgot to mention there's also a bit of an issue with rear vision, or rather lack of it. But that's pretty much a Lamborghini thing. And when you consider that you can do this, what's behind you doesn't really matter. So, Lamborghinis have come a long way. But have they come far enough to topple supercar royalty? The Ferrari 360 Modena isn't even a current model now, but with a 3.6 litre V8 making 294 kilowatts, you'll still need to find about a quarter of a million dollars, because that is the price of admission. I don't know about you, but just the thought of jumping in a Ferrari 360 and going for a fang up a nice piece of road fills me with joy. That is the power of the Ferrari badge. You can see that the interior of this car isn't as well put together as the one in the Lamborghini. But yet it's kind of cosy anyway, as if it's been hand-stitched by craftsmen in some remote Italian village. I guess what I like about this car most is that because the engine's so lively and the gearing's quite short, it feels like you're giving it some real stick even before you get to lock me up and throw away the key speeds but not everybody's going to like it. Because of that liveliness and because of that responsive engine and because all the controls are scalpel sharp, it's actually quite a difficult car to drive smoothly. Of course, that only makes it all the more satisfying when you get it right, not to mention all the more embarrassing when you get it wrong. Then again, if you can afford a Ferrari, a bit of humility probably won't hurt you either. Oh, and there's that other Ferrari trademark too. Have a listen to this.
that doesn't do it for you, go and see a doctor and get him to check for a pulse. Picking a favourite from this lot is not easy. The Aston is uber sleek and the Lambo is a sledgehammer with headlights. They both have their admirers and I'd be happy with either of them in my driveway. However, for a car that's still fun even at sane velocities, a car that I'm not going to get sick of in a hurry and a car that is, let's face it, drop dead gorgeous, well, all roads lead to Modena. <laughs>